Hello everyone and welcome again to Word of Faith Fellowship radio program. This is Mark and today I have a very special program. I have two of my dear friends with me. I have Bobby and I have John uh, and they are in the truck driving industry and they're going to share with you today about what God has done uh, in their lives as they've driven across this country all over the place and they have seen miracles in their lives. Uh, actually, John and Bobby drove together for several years, uh, long distance, going and picking up produce and vegetables and going all the way to California and, and, and other states. And so they definitely have seen the hand of God on their lives. Uh, there is miracles that they have witnessed on the road, God's protecting power on their lives, and they have learned uh, that it it is something you have to do to be safe on the road is you've got to trust God and you've got to pray. And our church also prays for them and they're on our prayer list a lot and so we keep them in prayer. So they're here and they want to share with you what God has done in their lives. So Bobby, let's start with you and would you first tell the listeners uh, what it is to be on the road as a long distance truck driver? Yes, uh, well, um, good morning, Rutherford County, um, it is a pleasure to be here this morning, and um, I drive uh, over the road. Um, I'm normally gone uh, roughly two weeks, maybe three weeks, but um, we normally start from Rutherfordton, then we go out to Reno, Nevada, and then into California, possibly into Washington uh, State, and then and then back within four days and um, I drive teams uh, ever since I've been with uh, freight works I have uh, I have driven teams and and um, um, there was a time where I I went solo for about maybe two two and a half months and and um, it that wasn't for me I wanted to be with somebody at the you know just to where I have someone to talk to you know and is this a uh the truck you drive does it have a sleeper cabin yeah it actually has bunk beds um it has a refrigerator and we have a microwave it's like a mini apartment and so while you're driving is your partner sleeping is yes it... yes um yeah uh a lot of times um like um whenever i'm done driving um I'll stay up with him for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, just to just to get a feel for for how he's doing and and uh, um, how he feels and 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 everything. And then uh, um, then I'll go lay down and and I always tell him uh, um, if you need me, don't hesitate, you know, t to let me know because because. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the way the roads are and the construction and everything is out there, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's serious, you know. Yes, absolutely. Well, tell us, Bobby, what, uh, you have seen God do in your life as you've been on the road. Well, um, I want to, I want to give one scripture, just kind of start it off of, of just where, where, um, uh, where I've seen the faithfulness of God, and it's in Isaiah um, 41, verse 10. It says, Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will harden you, you to difficulties. I will help you. I will hold hold you up and and retain you in my right hand of righteousness and justice. With that, I have gone through um, uh, uh, things like when everybody is sleeping. I drive from midnight to t t twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and um, a lot of times, you know, the road is it, it, it's real quiet. But then other times it's, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of traffic and a lot of confusion. Um, 
Um, it, you know, it's there's just a lot you have to you have to have a hold of of um, everything next to you, uh, in front of you, and even behind you. Um, it's um, um, I've I've got a few experiences. Yeah, share with us. Okay, uh, well, there was one time, this was the most recent. I was coming through I-80 in Salt Lake City, and it was probably maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and there in Salt Lake, they're two hours behind. And so, so if it's, it was probably around 11, 12, you know, the roads were still real busy, and all of a sudden, I started seeing state troopers flying everywhere. And I'm on I-80, and and all the state troopers were actually heading to I-15. There's it, it's like overpasses, um, overpasses amongst overpasses. Anyway, there was a big pileup, and one, and I, I just happened to see. The car was flipped over on its on its hood, and then the next thing I come around the corner and there's the person's hood in my lane, and I had to I had to swerve out of the way. Mm -hmm. And whenever you swerve and you have s around roughly seventy seven thousand pounds, it's 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 um you know pretty intense. You gotta sure. you gotta be able to make sure that. You know, there's nobody around you, especially if you have to swerve out of the way, because or else you're going to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, another time, every time we go into Nevada, um, you never know what the weather's going to do. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of dust storms, um, a lot of high winds, and and. Uh, um, it doesn't even matter if you're 77 to even 80,000 pounds, those winds can knock you into the other lane, you know. Okay. And, uh, and one that I'm uh, real familiar with, me and John, is in Elk Mountain, Wyoming. And, mm -hmm. and that's out there, it's a given. It's, it's even, um, they say that it can snow in July mm -hmm. up on top of that mountain. And, and uh, they normally roughly, their winds could be 65 plus. And, and I had to go into the way station. A way station is, is where you have to show your documents before you go um, make sure that you're okay to wait wise to go on their, on their highways. And um, I had to go in there one night and I just asked the officer, I said, what do you consider? What do you consider a light trailer? And he says, if you blow over, you're a light trailer. And 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 then he says that at any given point in time, it doesn't matter how heavy you are, these winds out here are so strong that it can knock you over, and you can f you could be over in seconds. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and there's times, even as we're going through Wyoming, we see these big trucks. Uh, uh, e they're either crossing the road or on the side, you know, laying over, mm -hmm. and uh, it's you know, yeah. you know, it, you know, it's pretty serious and everything. Yeah. And uh, I actually have some uh, past experiences. That was a, just a recent, <coughs> but I have. Uh, there was one whenever I was with another driver. Um, we actually met John in Rollins, Wyoming. And so we met him at a truck stop. It, it's called um, the TA. And so um, I walked over to, to John's truck and I woke him up and and because uh, he knew that we were coming. And when we pulled in there, it started snowing really bad. And, and then we ended up getting stuck at that at that truck stop. And because they had a fifty-two truck pileup, oh. and and if if me and my partner would have kept going, we would have been right in that pileup. Yep. You know, so God spared you there for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah.
Yeah, and and um, and with that, I was in uh, a place called Button Willow, California, and that's out in the desert. It's over by um, I think it's over by Bakersfield, and um, I had to pick up uh, a load of potatoes the next morning, but I had just got finished um, using that particular. A uh, reefer unit as a dry van, and um, a reefer unit is where wh where you cool off, you know, your produce to keep it cold to maintain a you know to maintain a temperature, and and when we use it for dry van, it could be stuff that we haul for uh, that that doesn't have to have the the reefer unit running, and. Um, this is one particular time I was by myself and I had went to bed and then all of a sudden God woke me up and, and I started thinking about, well, you know, I, I never even turned this, this unit on. And so I get up and turn the unit on. And the next thing I knew there's fuel spewing out of the fuel filter and it's 11 o'clock California time. So it's, it's almost three, uh, North Carolina time, and so um, it was me. It I couldn't really call anybody to to get a hold of because it was me, and so I walked over to the uh, you know to their uh, um, mechanic shop, and the guy said all their mechanics were out on service calls, and so it was me. So I purchased this fuel filter. And I'm looking at the open unit trying to read, and it's pitch black out there, and, and I'm trying to read uh, how to put this thing on. And I remember John had told me once before, like, if you're, if you're using the fuel filter, uh, you always got to put fuel in, in the filter. See, because we used to always just uh, let, you know, our mechanics, you know, do all, all that. And... Um, and uh, so I knew to put the fuel in, 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 and then I put the filter on, but then I had to find the priming pump. And, and, <laughs> and that was a little difficult because everything kind of looked like, where is this priming pump, you know? And so I'm looking at the, the schematic, and I see a schematic of a, a pump, but then when I look at the uh, look and see where it was at it's like it was like hidden and uh and then i was i was able to find this thing and just pump it and pump it and pump it and pump it and pump it you literally had to pump it till you couldn't pump it anymore and i got the unit running and then i had another incident where i was in i was in oregon and um i was at a ta over over by Hood River, and in the middle of the night, my my radiator hose blew, and it's like 18 degrees out, snowing, mm -hmm. and there again it was me, because uh, it was me. So um, I went to the TA, and they they couldn't help me. So I walked over walked over to the Loves, and and they have a. a a service over there but they were getting ready to close so I went ahead and I took this hose off myself and 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 the guy saw the desperation in in me he literally drove all the way to Portland to go get one hose for me hmm. and and then he ends up he puts it on for me and and um, you know, there has been so many places where God has has helped me, um, you know, just in even in small situations, even the small situations, uh, it was me and Jesus. And and uh, and one thing that I told Sherry, I said, you know, that scripture where he's going to harden me to difficulties, I tell her that even now of of it's you have to you have to have a clear mind and and you have to be uh 
to where you can hear the voice of God and what to do. Absolutely. And that's powerful testimonies. And you've seen that in your life. Yeah. You, you, had, you were out there and you had no one to help you in those situations. Yeah. And it's you and Jesus. And, and Jesus. And, and Jesus showed up every time. So that's, yeah. that's powerful, Bobby. Uh, John, you, you were on the road. You've done a lot of uh, everything. You were a mechanic. Yeah. Uh, you've been long distance truck mm-hmm. driving. You team drove with Bobby. Yes. Uh, and and are you actually in the shop now? Yes, uh, I'm in the shop. I still uh, drive occasionally. Okay. Um, but uh, what I did want to go back and share some some experiences that Bobby and I had together yeah. as as a team. <clears throat> this is a <clears throat> to go with his um, i eighty i eighties. Um, if you if you ever Google i eighty, they I, interstate 80 is considered one of the uh, most treacherous interstates uh, in the United States. It's, it is clearly uh, through Wyoming is, like you said, uh, high winds are one of the biggest factors for, for a driver, a professional driver. It is, it is always there uh, all through the season. Uh, if you happen to uh go through and you and you miss high winds it's definitely a plus it's a miracle um like you said elk mountain uh uh, going through elk mountain rollins uh laramie those are if you can get through those areas you're you got it you're yeah that's like those are your carrot that's what kind of what we still kind of say if you can get through those areas you're i mean that's it's a blessing you can Mm -hmm. make you You've made it, and uh, so. But uh, to go back in our early days when we had gone through, we were um, Bobby and I. We um, we just started. We just started teaming, um, and uh, I'm from Montana, so I was used to snow. And Bobby, Bobby's from Florida. He, <laughs> he had he he had used to sunshine. Yeah, yeah. he's used to sunshine. <laughs> so I. I, I knew we were coming. We just we started teaming. It was like um, uh, in November, so we had. We I I was kind of so I was the lead driver, and I and I and I told him I said, uh, I said Bobby, there's a possibility we're probably gonna hit snow on the way back. So we had already gone to Reno, and we're coming back through Wyoming. And he was, like he said, we were on a shift, and so we were. I was resting, and and uh, he had gone through Salt Lake and he's coming up through Wyoming and and uh, he woke me up he said there's snow on the ground so several times <laughs> so I said so I told him I said I said okay well we're not gonna I'm not gonna push you I said let's just pull just pull over find a spot f- find a spot pull over and we'll we'll wait because I I feel more confident about about me driving in snow than than he did so I said just pull over uh, we'll take a break and then when my shift comes we'll We'll regroup and let's see what happens with the storm. So, so we're keeping monitored and we do have we do travel with the uh, a CB to monitor the uh, what was going on. And as we were resting, um, all of a sudden it it was probably about two o'clock in the morning because we were at that time we were our shift was three to three. So he was it was coming up on two o'clock. And you could hear all this activity going on, and and then uh, I, t- I, t- I got up and and Bobby is sleeping. I turned up the volume a little bit, and I could hear people were commotion was really happening, and I could hear some people were saying, "Do not get on the interstate." So I got I got dressed and I went into the truck stop, and I I started getting some information. Well, it turned out there was the uh, roads had changed very rapidly and there was a uh, uh, turn icy that ended up being a, a 60 car pileup uh, on the interstate and I so saw the hand of God because if we would have continued driving on his shift he, right. he would we could have easily been involved in that accident yes. if we would have continued on and kept going through that snowstorm and I mean, I am so grateful to God for people that pray in our church for the truck drivers, because it is like bread for our drivers. Mm-hmm. And um, 
And then there was another time where we we ev- we voted uh, a tornado on uh, Nebraska uh, two, and that was the same situation. Bobby's driving, and I was on second shift. We were we were coming through, um, and the weather had changed really rapidly, and um, the rain was going sideways. It was getting really rough. I could feel the truck because I was resting. It was we was slapping us back and forth, and we can't. We came to uh, uh, Sid. It was right before you got to Sydney, and um, uh, Bobby pulled pulled over to a truck stop. And by then, um, you know, our uh, my weather app was just telling me, you know, we were under a tornado warning. And we pulled in to the uh, fuel island, and this particular truck stop had inside of the uh, the men's bathroom. It it had looped. Um, they were playing the Weather Channel. Mm-hmm. On they had a big monitor uh, inside there for all the drivers to see the weather. Mm-hmm. So we were watching this thing, and 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 we were in just amazement that we stopped when we did. So instantly, um, I can't remember if it was he or I. We we contacted the church and and we told them to pray, and then we uh, of course we contacted our pastor. We told her what, what was going on. And we said we we feel like we we're gonna stay, and and uh, she said yes, stay. <laughs> so we we stayed. We 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 uh, parked the truck, and it was really amazing how God even had a spot for us because that place was packed out. I mean, everybody was to find a spot at that time of the night. It was I mean, it was God for us. Mm-hmm. We parked. We waited the whole time. With the winds were blowing. It was I mean, it was definitely tornadic. Weather. Even that guy, there it, was a storm chaser. Yeah, and then uh, so then uh, uh, we were waiting, and uh, and then my CB's going, and folks are saying uh, there was a guy. Um, he was on the radio frequency. He was tell- warning drivers not to get out onto the interstate, and so I'm listening, and listening to him, and then we rested. So then I heard him again, and it was about an hour or so later. And it, the weather had gone down a little bit. It wasn't raining. Uh, the winds weren't blowing in as bad, but they still had the warning out. And then, uh, so I asked. So I said, Bobby, what do you feel? Do we, do should we go out? Because we were under load, and we had a time constraint. And so he said, Well, I don't know. You know, what do you have hold of? And I said, Well, I feel like we could go. So I contact this guy on the radio again, and he says, Well, how heavy are you? So so I told him uh, the weight we were, and I started to proceed down the road, and I'm I'm going southbound towards um, towards uh, Kansas City, and we're we're conversing, and I'm asking him questions about himself, and it turns out this man was a weather chaser, and he was actually uh, blazing a path for us down the road, and then he told us. That on I-70, um, if we would have gone out uh, when we did, the, a tornado was rolling on I-70, going eastbound uh, on I-70, and he he was stopping people uh, from coming out, and that, and so God spared us. Yes. And that particular time, but the thing I really wanted to share it with you was how he and I we we you know we had to build a trust, and and you know as teams you have to. You have to trust each other uh, when you're driving because I mean, he, his life and my life. And when you go to sleep, you have to trust. And then I wanted to share with you a scripture that I had in Second uh, Chronicles, and I'll just kind of briefly because we're we're getting our time's going fast. And it's Second uh, Chronicles 15, and it's it's about, uh, <clears throat> and I'll just read it. Uh, it says. Uh, uh, verse 2, and and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, and the Lord is with you while you are with him. And if you seek him, inquiring for and of him, craving him of your soul's first necessity, he will be fine by, by you. But if you become indifferent and forsake him, he will forsake you. And that was the thing. I mean, we, every... Every time before we left for a trip, that was in our hearts that we were going to seek God, 
and and you could see at each point how God protected us and He kept us. And then in verse, and in verse twelve, because I could see how you know this was us. Verse twelve, and and we entered into and and it says in verse twelve, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, to yearn for Him with all their heart's desire and with all their soul. And that was us. And that was that was what and that's what God wants us as as a people in this time and hour to to enter in that covenant to seek God, you know, uh, with all our heart's desire. And and also I just wanted to share one one other scripture real quick in Hebrews thirteen, you know, um I know we're running out of time here. Yeah. Um uh, go quickly here. Hebrews 13, verse 5 here. It says, Let your character and your moral disposition be free from the love of money, including a greed, avarice, lust, and craving for er earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give up, nor leave you without support. And that's, I mean, I could so see God, he, he, he has never, while we drove, have, have left us without. He said, I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down and relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. And I can so see that, I mean, over and over, time and time. And so we take comfort and are not, and, and and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, "The Lord is my helper. I will be. I, I will not be seized with alarm, and I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me?" Yeah. I mean, this right there. That is that is our testimony as drivers. I will not fear. What God? I mean, what? I mean, God has been our helper over and over. That's very powerful, John. And and what powerful testimonies! You know, when we we go on these highways and we see all these 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 huge trucks driving, and they're and they're all over the place. Uh, the, I, as I'm hearing you share, I'm so mindful of just how the keeping power has been on your lives, and how important it is that we continue to pray for both of you. That we continue to pray for all the truck drivers out there on Absolutely. the roads, as you said. Bobby, you're carrying a huge amount of weight, and and you're and you're going all over the place. And God's hand has been on both of you. Um, we just have a minute left, John. Would you just share uh, for the listeners how, when you're driving that vehicle, um, just just the relationship with Jesus as you're on the road, you're behind the wheel, you've got your hands on the steering wheel, and you're tell tell them uh, in a real nutshell how 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 it is that we all can live safely, that we all can live in the protection of God is in relationship and just hearing his voice and how God's shown you how you hear his voice as you're driving. Well, um, yeah, there's a great, a great example really quick. Um, and, it, and it comes out of Matthew 4, 14 when Jesus, um, he, he, uh, when he was walking on the water and he told the disciple to come. He said, come, come, and and the disciples said, "Can't come to me, can I?" And and he stepped out in faith, because he knew God said, and that's that relationship, you know, yes. where you know driving. I know uh, there's nothing I can do without without Jesus. When I have my hands hands at the wheel, I I trust I trust God. There's no I don't have any ability in myself. I can't do anything without without God flowing through me. To, to do what what I need to do, and and when I when I know I'm when I know I have that peace and that comfort, then then the job gets done and and I get home safely and the the load gets there safely and the equipment gets there safely, and and the blessings there. That's great. Well, yeah, thank so. you both of you for coming. We've actually been working on this program for a long time, trying to get Bobby back from <laughs> all over the country here. And so thank you both for being here. And we thank you for listening. Uh, this is Word of Faith Fellowship. 
and we're so glad that you continue to listen to us. We are on these programs Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8.30 to 9. Thank you.